Well, my name is Chris Roberts, and I'd like to welcome you to The Long Road. Today we're going to have a, <clears throat> a story about women and the power of women around the, the world. In a lot of places with multinational corporations are going for mineral extraction, oil extraction in a lot of the poor countries in Central America, Africa, and South America. The men, they're doing their best to hold jobs and they don't want to say anything. The women, they see some of the problems they have, some of the pollution, some of the um, illnesses that their children are getting. And so a lot of these um, <clears throat> indigenous women are standing up and, and fighting for their culture, fighting for their families against the multinational um, corporations. You have, may have heard certain things like, for example, in Ecuador, where they're suing some like Shell Oil Company for all the environmental um, hazards and environmental damage that has um, resulted. Today's story is going to be about a woman from Guatemala. Um, she, she is going around the country standing up, trying to um, just protect, like I said, their culture and the safety and the dignity of their families. <clears throat> it's going to be a little grainy. I, I photographed, I filmed the um, presentation. I'm not very good at it, but I hope it comes across um, very well. And again, I hope you en enjoy the show. Thank you. So good evening, and thank you for uh, opening the space to me to talk. We re I really appreciate uh, your, the attention and uh, my friend. Here, it's to her and her organization that we are doing this tour. Thank you also to uh, Chris Hansen uh, for coordinating and to Carol for opening, uh, for her very delicious cooking. And uh, thank you for opening up your house. As the song says, um, I'm very happy to be able to be here with you today, to be able to share um, some of the reality, which is sad and, and painful, about the reality of indigenous women in, in Guatemala. Eh, bueno, soy Victoria Cumes, eh, Pocholá, eh, soy Cachiquiel, soy de una comunidad eh, indígena. Eh, estamos eh, aquí para divulgar y para denunciar eh, la viola, violación que sufrimos eh, las mujeres indígenas eh, allá. So, my name is Victoria Cumes, Pocholá. And I am from the indigenous group Kachikil. I'm from an indigenous community. And I'm here to spread information and denounce the violations that we experience as indigenous women. Bueno, quiero eh, empezar eh, eh, a contarles que eh, en Guatemala eh, es un país eh, que habitamos eh, más de 14 millones eh, de, de personas en la cual estamos eh, so I want to start by telling you that Guatemala is a country that has 14 million people in which we are recognized to have four peoples. Y, estos cuatro pueblos, eh, somos... Four towns. She's going to explain that. Que me corregió, pero usted va a explicar lo que son pueblos. Uh -huh. Estamos en eh, el pueblo maya. El pueblo garífona, el pueblo xinca y el pueblo mestizo. So we are the Maya peoples, the garífona peoples, the xinca people, and also mestizo. Entonces eh, nos llamamos pueblos porque nos eh, a partir de la firma de los acuerdos de paz quedan oficializados que eh, por por la historia, por lo que significa, fueron o sea somos reconocidos como, como pueblos. So we are called uh, people because starting with the peace accords, our, um, our different uh, people or, or uh, groups were recognized. Bueno, en Guatemala está la mayoría vivimos, bueno, el porcentaje de la población somos mayoritariamente indígena. La Las mujeres somos el, el 51% y las mujeres indígenas somos el 48%. So in Guatemala, the highest percentage of our population is indigenous, 
51% uh, are women, and 48% are indigenous women. Entonces, eh, ante esta realidad, en Guatemala es un país que quienes gobierna, eh, solo hay siete familias quienes tienen el poder económico, social eh, y legal, eh, y la mayoría de, de la población, eh, bueno, en este caso, las, el pueblo indígena, eh, tenemos eh, menos oportunidades. So within this context, Guatemala is governed basically by seven families that have all of the economic, social, and cultural power over uh, the majority of the population. Uh, I'm sorry, the majority of the population, in this case, indigenous peoples, have the least opportunities. Um, bueno, ante esta, esta realidad, eh, la quiero hablarles en lo específico de las mujeres indígenas donde ya llevamos eh, más de 500 años de lucha con nuestras ancestras, nuestras abuelas siempre lucharon también. Entonces, eh, desde ahí viene esta, esta lucha y pues como mujeres indígenas eh, estamos luchando contra un sistema eh, patriarcal, racista y discriminativo. So within, <clears throat> within this context, I want to talk specifically about indigenous women who for more than 500 years have been struggling. We struggle as our ancestors struggled, and from them comes uh, this, this current struggle. As indigenous women, we are fighting against a system which is patriarchal, racist, and discriminatory. Eh, a las mujeres indígenas somos eh, visibi, incibi, si dice, no nos ven. Eh, como parte de la sociedad eh, nos han categorizado en, en que nos hacen, hacen de menos por el hecho de ser eh, mujer eh, e indígena y pobre. So as an indigenous woman we are invisibilized or we are not seen as part of the society, we are categorized as less than and uh, this occurs for being women, for being indigenous and for being poor. Um, bueno, el Estado siempre, o los gobiernos, siempre eh, defienden eh, los intereses de otros, no de la población. Como ya les eh, había mencionado que en Guatemala solo hay un, un élite de, 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 del poder, quienes son los que dirigen el, el país. Entonces, ante esto, las mujeres estamos luchando y pues quiero contarles eh, a, a una realidad que estamos viviendo en este momento. So the state or the government always defends the interests um, of their, their own interests, not that of the population. And so as I mentioned, in Guatemala there is a powerful um, elite. Um, and so the... For this reason, indigenous women are fighting against this, and I want to specif specifically talk about uh, one particular context, one particular, particular situation. Entonces, eh, el gobierno de Guatemala eh, hace negociaciones con empresas transnacionales. And so the, okay. so the government of Guatemala negotiated with transnational corporations. Entonces, eh, voy a hablarles sobre esta compañía de, de Canadá que se llaman eh, Marlin y Gorgo, que son empresas eh, que, quienes llegaron a Guatemala a explotar este, mina, y en este caso estamos hablando del de oro. So I will speak about a Canadian company by the name of Goldcorp, uh, from the Marlin Mine, a company that came to uh, undertake mining exploitation, specifically gold. Entonces esta compañía llegó a... a hacer negociaciones muy privadas con, con el gobierno donde el gobierno cede el, la, la, el permiso o más bien dicho ellos negociaron eh, cuánto tiempo iban a estar explotando y pues el gobierno no les autorizó para quedarse para 20 años. And so the company came and privately negotiated with the government and the government uh, ceded their or gave their permission, negotiated how much time they would be in the country, and the government gave them 20 years of exploiting life, exploitation lives. Y la otra negociación que hicieron es que esta compañía, eh, la ganancia que les va a dejar a, a Guatemala es el 2%. 
And so the other uh, benefit that the company negotiated was to only leave 2% of the profits to the state of Guatemala. Entonces cuando ellos ya eh, les dan eh, la licencia, todo eh, van a, 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 al municipio de, de San Miguel, Ixtahuacán, de San Marcos, donde llegan a engañar a, a las familias y a las comunidades. So once this license was granted, the company went to the municipality where they tricked the families and the communities. Entonces ellos eh, nunca dijeron qué es lo que iban a hacer ahí en el territorio. Entonces se empezaron a, a ilusionar a, a las personas. Eh, en este caso los hombres eh, fueron los que decidieron para vender sus tierras en un costo muy bajo. Cada acuerdo... So they never uh, said exactly what they were going to be using the, the land for, and people got very excited. In this case, uh, the men decided to sell their land very cheaply. They sold one cuerda, which is 16 acres, for 4,000 quetzales, which is about $500. Por, bueno, las familias, por la situación en que se vive y toda la población indígena, eh, hay, o sea, no hay trabajo, ellos se eh, dependen de, del maíz, eh, el frijol, entonces no hay otro, no hay otro, no hay un ingreso que les entra a sus familias. Entonces cuando ellos se eh, escucharon que, que van a pagar bien y ellos les ilusionaron para decir, miren, eh, si venden todas las tierras van a poder tener dinero, pueden hacer lo que ustedes quieren. So the families, because of the living conditions that they are working in, a lack of jobs, they depend primarily on raising, uh, on harvesting corn and beans. There's no income for the families. So they heard that this company would pay well and, and everyone became excited. And the company said, if you sell all of your land, you'll get money and you'll be able to do what you want. Entonces, um, fue así. Eh, las mujeres se hicieron, o sea, empezaron a, a, a preguntar qué van a hacer ahí porque la mayoría de las familias dejaron sus tierras unas familias vendieron más de 25 cuerdas una familia dejó 50 cuerdas y entonces y las mujeres siempre preguntaron qué van a hacer y empezaron a preguntar a sacar información y les dijeron que lo que van a hacer ahí es una mina para llevárselo and so the women started asking, what is it that you're going to, to do here? Because uh, the majority um, did sell their land. Some sold more than 25 cuerdas, um, 50. And the women asked, you know, what, what, is, what are you doing here? And they started to gather information and find, found out that mining for, for gold was going to happen. Entonces ellas empezaron a, a ver qué se podía hacer, a, a resistir. Y, y a decir, pero, pero aquí ustedes nos van a quitar todo, o sea, ya nos vamos a quedar sin nada. Entonces ellos eh, nunca escucharon a las mujeres, siempre las invisibilizaron y fue así hasta lograron su objetivo, pues en la cual en este momento ya están sacando el oro eh, y pues las mujeres desde ese entonces empiezan a hacer acciones. So they started to see, women started to see what it was they, they could do. They started to resist. And they said, you're going to, to take everything away from us. We're not going to be left with anything. Uh, but they, they weren't listened to. They were invisibilized. And so ultimately, the company's goal was achieved. And they are now taking the gold out. And some of the women since then have taken actions. Entonces, eh, ellas se hicieron, se empezaron a hacer acciones en contra de la mina. Y pues una de ellas eh, tenía su, su casa, se está su, su casa cerca de la mina y pues como ellos querían más tierra y pues llegaron con ella y le dijeron que ellos querían eh, tener un poste de luz eh, atrás de la casa y pues porque lo que estaban haciendo ellos, ellos es desarrollo para, para la comunidad y para todo el país. And so they, the women started taking actions against the mine, and, and one woman had a house which was near the site of the mine, and this, the mining company wanted more and more land, and so they approached her, and they wanted to put an electrical post on her land, saying that, you know, we're bringing development. 
Entonces, eh, esta, esta empresa pues puso su poste, conectó la luz para la mina, entonces vino la, la, la compañera, pues les cortó la luz a la mina. Y estos son los cables que ella cortó. So the company uh, came and without permission put... Um, ¿Dijiste sin permiso? Mm -hmm. So the electrical company put the uh, the mining company put the electrical post in without permission and connected it. Um, and though she was, they were just showing where the cables were in the photographs. Um, and so one woman cut the electrical line. Entonces viene la la empresa y demanda a la compañera. Entonces ahora ella y otras mujeres quienes también están haciendo acciones en contra eh, ahora tienen orden de captura so the company came along and denounced this woman and so these so other women who have been involved in different actions now have along with her arrest warrants out for them entonces ellas ahora no pueden salir fuera de, de, de la casa cada vez cuando ven a una patrulla tienen que esconderse porque en cualquier momento las pueden capturar y meterlas a la cárcel. So these women can't leave the house whenever they see a police patrol they have to hide because at any moment they might be captured and put in jail. Entonces eh, ante esta realidad muchas organizaciones eh, eh, estamos eh, apoyando a, a con en este caso el movimiento de mujeres indígenas está acompañando a a estas mujeres y otras organizaciones a, a las otras a la, a la población pero ha sido tan difícil porque la, la, la compañía este ha, ha dividido a las comunidades so many organizations are, are supporting this woman and in the case of my organization the, the movement of indigenous women are accompanying the, the women in San Marcos and other organizations from the population, but it's been very difficult because the company has divided the community. Entonces, eh, hay un conflicto muy fuerte entre, entre las, las familias porque eh, eh, la mina ha, ha influido mucho en la vida de ellos, donde les dicen que por qué están en contra si ellos están trabajando y están ahí sé que haciendo desarrollo pero eh, las mujeres dicen no eso no es desarrollo eso es destrucción para para nosotros y, y eso no ya o sea nos está afectando mucho dicen las mujeres so there is a serious conflict between the families because the mine has greatly impacted their lives and some of the people will say well why are you against this company if this company brings uh, development but the women say this is not development they are bringing destruction To their, to their lives. Y, y muchos eh, trabajadores de las comunidades y de otras son esposos de las compañeras quienes están trabajando en la mina. So many workers that are uh, working in the mine are the husbands of, of these women that are resisting. Entonces ellas ahora tienen, están, eh, ellas están <coughs> pasando en un momento de de crisis, de dolor, están muy afectadas porque ellas eh, son violentadas, eh, se, así se, psicológicamente, emocionalmente, incluso han sido eh, acosados sexualmente y lo más grave es que ellas están eh, también amenazadas de muerte. So these women are in a moment of crisis, um, they are in much pain, they're very impacted because They are being attacked psychologically, emotionally, uh, there's even sexual harassment. Entonces, eh, ante esta real, realidad, eh, las mujeres estamos luchando contra un monstruo en la cual eh, es bien cansado y, y pues ellos, eh, y juntamente con el gobierno, o sea, no ven, o sea, no escuchan. Este, qué impacto está generando en la vida de, de, de las comunidades. So basically we are we are fighting a monster. It's a, it's a very tiring uh, jointly with the government. The company does not listen to what the impacts are on the lives of the communities. Y también a raíz de eso ya se ya se está viendo eh, eh, enfermedades en la piel. 
Entonces, y mujeres que también se les está cayendo el, el, el pelo por la contaminación ya. Entonces vamos a, a ver, eh, un, vamos a escuchar eh, un testimonio de una compañera que ella es la que iba a venir con nosotras a esta gira para que ella hubiera dado su testimonio de cómo ellas viven allá en, en San Miguel. Entonces ella, eh, ella trae un mensaje ese para ustedes y pues ya después ustedes quieren saber más hay o sea es, es bien complicado entonces queremos hacer este esta reunión como un diálogo para que ustedes sepan o sea, qué está pasando en, en Guatemala uh, so because of this we are already seeing illnesses in the skin there are women whose hair is falling out because of the contamination so we're going to listen to the testimony of a woman who uh, was going to come with me on this tour to be able to give her testimony about how exactly how they live in San Miguel, Ixtahuacan. And she sends a message for you that we'll uh, listen to, um, a testimony we'll listen to afterwards uh, if you want to learn more. It's a very complex uh, theme. And so we want to dialogue and, and hear questions so that you can learn more about what's happening in Guatemala. Y Cristian está dando el testimonio completo de Santa para que si quieren leer, porque está a veces difícil leer. Um, so, Chris is handing out a copy of her full testimony. We have a portion of it here in this video. And there's some parts, because we had to do it very uh, last minute, we, uh, there's some parts that are slightly difficult to read. So, you can, um, the full testimony is there if something isn't clear in the video. Yeah, I can't see you want to turn the light Gordon, back on, Gordon? Turn the light for a minute? Thank you. 
Bueno, entonces, como ustedes eh, vieron, este, es de explotación minera. Y pues tanto en San Marcos como en, en un municipio cerca de la capital, igual están en eso, de que quieren ex hacer explotación. Ya las organizaciones ya nos estamos eh, uniendo para hacer frente a esto en Izabal, en el Estor. También este, quieren hacer, ahí este, muchas comunidades se han organizado a resistir a, y decir no a la minería. Entonces, y los que dirigen las organizaciones que son líderes, eh, ahí sí, hombres y mujeres, eh, dos, un hombre y una mujer fueron asesinadas por defender lo que es de ellos. Entonces, eh, Guatemala en este momento es como, es un país que lleva el primer lugar de, de violencia y femicidio contra las mujeres también. Entonces, nos quieren eliminar y pues en eh, Guatemala eh, vivimos más de 36 años de, de, de guerra. So as you saw, this is what the uh, women are living in the municipality uh, of uh, San Marcos, although at the national level there are actually 56 licenses for mining exploitation authorized um, in San Marcos and San Miguel and other municipalities near the capital, um, they are wanting to move forward with mining projects. There are organizations that have united uh, to confront this in El Estor, the department, in the department of Izabal. Uh, they also have mining issues and in that area, communities have organized. Um, those who direct the, women, the movement are women and men there. Um, and a woman and a man, um, two leaders were, were killed for defending what is theirs. And Guatemala is uh, one, has one of the highest rates of violence and for femicide um, against women. And so uh, they want to eliminate us. In Guatemala, uh, we've lived, uh, we lived more than 36 years of war. Mm -hmm. Y pues también, no solo el caso de, de explotación, sino que también hay mucho desalojo de comunidades. Y podemos hablar de, de la comunidad de Polochic, de, en Alta de la Paz quienes hace como 20 días fueron desalojados y ahora eh, las familias están viviendo en la, en la orilla de las carreteras. So this is not this is not just a case of, of mining exploitation. There are also high numbers of violent evictions in different areas. Um, about 20 days ago in the area of Polo Chic, there were violent evictions and now families are living on the side of the highway. Entonces, the road. entonces para nosotras es bien difícil porque tanto las empresas transnacionales, el gobierno y el, el grupo que tiene el poder económico son los que están haciendo la destrucción del país. And so for us it's very difficult because it's the transnational corporations and the government holding economic power that are creating this destruction in our country. <coughs> Entonces estas mujeres son las afectadas directamente, son las que están luchando en contra de la, de la misma. So these are women that are directly impacted by uh, the mining. Entonces, eh, pues, ustedes dirán si tienen preguntas o qué quieren saber. So uh, we're going to leave it open for questions and, and what you might want to know. And tal vez como ya pasé la acción a unos pero no hemos llegado, puedo decir esa parte. También. Bueno. Um, I asked just for permission to give this um, my spiel, <laughs> my part of the spiel, especially since some new people came in and we had these ac international action letters that we passed out to the people who had been here, who were here first, and we'll make sure that you get them. But there's an international letter campaign that's urging the Guatemalan government to respect <coughs> the recommendations of the United Nations, of the United Nations Special <coughs> Rapporteur for Indigenous Peoples. And so there's an international letter campaign. If you're interested in knowing what they're going to do about uh, with these letters, you can ask Victoria. And um, once we're finished, I, you know, I can speak a little more about some of the actions we can take today. Digo todas las acciones o? Sí? Oh, okay. I said, should I say all the actions now? Or not? Um, so we have a lot of information here that we can share 
that is also available electronically. If you don't want to take all the paper, you can get information about Victoria's group, you know, my different resources at um, nisgua.org, N-I-S-G-U-A.org. And we also, Chris is a local activist, very involved in supporting our international human rights company or program. I, I was actually supported by people in this area to be a, 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 a human rights observer way back, way back when, if you miss. So there's information about that, and we have calendars, a DVD about the mining issue, and t-shirts to sell, and there's also passing with the hat, because all of the funds after covering costs go to Victoria's uh, group that is going to provide a solidarity fund for the, for the women in San Miguel. There's also Kate and Brian. <laughs> <laughs> What does, the what, what does the government, uh, government of Guatemala get out of this mining business? ¿Qué recibe el gobierno de Guatemala de ese el negocio de minería? Ellos estuvieron en, en, en acuerdo con la compañía y, y ellos aceptaron recibir el 2% de ganancia de esa mina. So the Guatemalan government, in negotiations with the company, made an agreement with the company that they would receive. 2% of the profits of the mine. Do you know how much that is? Um, ¿Sabes cuánto dinero es en total hasta la fecha? Es poquito nada. Creo que hasta se les ha olvidado el dar. Me han dado, creo que el 2%. She said she's not even sure that they've given the, the entire 2%. Um, lo que sabemos es que son billones que han sacado, pero we know they've taken out billions of dollars, but what they've given is not. Yeah, I think that... Um, the report that, that Graham gave, Graham Hunt, who was a, an accompanier who spoke in town a, a few weeks ago, I think he said that the, the um, income from the mine, maybe in the last year, was $4 billion. I don't, it's in the billion somewhere. I'm not sure the figure, but it is something like that. But the income of the mine, not that represents the mine's profit, not the 2%. Right. right. And the 2% goes to the government? Yes, it goes to the government. Of Guatemala. But not to the community. But why, then what, what's in it for the government? The mine is a Yeah. 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 Um, one, two, and I don't know who else. Can we have one question at a time? Thank you. Yeah, good point. Thank you. Because there is no contract between the government and the company Goldcore that gives money to the state, or no? Why? That there is no contract between the government and the state of Goldcore that says that we are going to pay the state of Goldcore that says that que nos debes 2% de todas las ganancias que sacas de la mina y quién se encarga de, de asegurar que sí Goldcore dé el dinero al Estado. Negociaron, negociaron entre ellos este, cómo iban a hacer. Por eso es que el gobierno en ese entonces, que fue en el 2003, eh, donde firmaron el, el acuerdo y donde quedaron que, que la compañía les da el 2%, pero ahora nadie, o sea, no les interesa eh, decir porque ellos, incluso el gobierno, Ahora eh, no quiere escuchar a las comunidades porque una de las protestas que hemos hecho y muchas en las comunidades es sacar a la empresa de ahí, pero él no quiere escuchar. O sea, él no le interesa. Él está más aliado con este grupo que tiene el poder económico en Guatemala. Él no, no vela por los intereses de la población en general y en este caso del pueblo indígena. Uh, can you write that down? It's more than I remember it all. No te I'm not going to stop you from talking if you give me a break. <laughs> um, so the, the negotiations uh, 
which happened between the government and the company, this is going back to 2003. Mm -hmm. So agreements were signed in which, yes, the company agreed to give their 2%, but they're not interested, the point is they're not interested in, in, in what is happening. The <coughs> government doesn't want to listen. We want the mine out. And uh, they're not interested in hearing um, these types of uh, messages. The, the president is allied with the group that has the economic power in Guatemala, and he doesn't back the, the rights of the people in Guatemala, especially indigenous peoples. Mm -hmm. No? Okay. <laughs> and, okay. Tim. Um, you know, puede recordar the nombre de acuerdo entre Estados Unidos and America Central. CAFTA. CAFTA. Pero en inglés es CAFTA, pero en español yo no sé. Oh, perdón, TLC. El, TLC. 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 En el TLC yo aprendí que después de TLC que demasiado corporaciones comenzaron a, a hacer uh, acuerdos con este tipo de países en América Central y comenzaron en una manera muy rapidísimo a sacar los recursos naturales de muchos países con este acuerdo. Y yo quiero saber que esta situación con este, ¿cómo se dice? Mina, mina es por este, o es después de 2003 cuando comenzaron este acuerdo, ¿no? Y 2005 es de acuerdo en TLC, ¿no? Y por este, este es antes de TLC, ¿sí? No por la TLC. Do you want to translate your own question? I was just trying to understand if, because we signed the Central American Free Trade Agreement, if this is why these mines are going. Because when we passed the Central American Free Trade Agreement, it was my understanding that there are these, there's a huge increase in the corporations that are mm -hmm. developing or creating these kinds of agreements with countries to take out large amounts of their natural resources. That happened in Peru after we passed the Free Trade Agreement. And uh, I think it was 70% of the Peruvian Amazon, it was 13% of the Peruvian Amazon was zoned for oil and gas exploration prior to the Peru Trade Agreement, but 70% after the passage of the Peru Trade Agreement. So I was just trying to understand what's the relationship between Gold Corp and the Central American Free Trade Agreement. Bueno, eh, contarles que en, que en Guatemala, eh, en, el, en 1996 se da a los, a, a la, a la firma de los acuerdos de paz. Entonces, eh, cuando se da eso, o sea, era como en Guatemala mismo, era la oportunidad, o sea, de poder seguir avanzando y para otros países también. Pero eh, en, en este momento ya llevamos más de 12 años de la firma y no nada. En lugar de avanzar, estamos retrocediendo, ahora hay más pobreza. So in Guatemala, just to share with you, in 1996, the peace accords were signed. So that was a moment in Guatemala which was an opportunity uh, for Guatemala, but also for other countries. And so, and now, so now 12 years, um, we are more than 12 years past the signing of the peace accords, and we haven't had um, any advances. Uh, it's been the opposite. We've gone back. Bueno, este, en lo del libre tratado o comercio, yo honestamente no les puedo o sea, decir, pero eh, igual también ahí hubo una lucha muy, muy fuerte también, pero eh, igual se manejaron muchas informaciones y pues igual quedó ahí, no, no, bueno, yo no sé nada de eso ahora, más que, eh, que, que, que con esto de, 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 de todo el país, quienes, bueno, Eh, la, la compañía, bueno, las empresas transnacionales andan viendo, o sea, cómo sacar, bueno, cómo quitarnos todos los, los recursos naturales que tenemos en el tema. And so regarding CAFTA specifically, I can't, I can't really speak to that. Uh, that was, there was also a very, very serious struggle against CAFTA at the time, and there was a lot of information, but 
I'm, I'm honestly not sure now about the, the information. I can say at the national level, trans, at the national level, transnational corporations are, are looking how to take all kinds of natural resources away. And, uh, no, I finished. Trans okay. Uh, CAFTA is not a factor so much in Guatemala, but in the region, uh, there are other gold mining companies. Uh, specifically Pacific Rim in El Salvador, which is a U.S. company. And because the government of El Salvador has, and the people of El Salvador have protested the mine uh, that Pacific Rim is running there, then Pacific Rim is suing the government of El Salvador under CAFTA for loss of profit. <laughs> and, and there are similar issues in Honduras also, because there is quite a lot of gold mining in the um, this is a but that, she said in Honduras, just to give her a chance to respond, um, she said that the, uh, in Honduras that the, the mine is no longer operating. And yes, exactly, that the government of El Salvador supported the mine in leaving, so it's a slightly different situation there. Oh, no. And Pacific Rim is Canadian? No, U.S. US. US. Oh, um, I just asked for a word, uh, or for, uh, for just a uh, response time. Um, que si CAFTA si impacta a Guatemala y si hay estudios. O sea, CAFTA, of course, does impact Guatemala, and there's a lot of studies. Y de, y de hoy en día, los mega, el plan de megaproyectos para todo el país, la franja transversal del norte, los hidroeléctricas y la minería son parte del plan de infraestructura para implementar CAFTA. <laughs> and so I said that um, CAFTA, of course, has high impacts, and actually the entire um, plan for Guatemala that includes the northern transversal strip, a mega highway, mega dams like the Shalala Dam, La Repeca Shalala, um, the mine, all of these are part of a major infrastructure project to, take, to sort of cut Guatemala into pieces, and that's the, called the Plan Puebla Panama, or what they now call the Mesoamerican Plan, because Plan Puebla Panama got a bad rap. So the Mesoamerican plan is intimately linked to all these mega projects, and it's the infrastructure project for CAFTA. So that is what, you know, if CAFTA moves goods, these are the infrastructure plans to get those goods moving. And so the mine is intimately linked with um, CAFTA through Plan Puebla Panama, the infrastructure plan. Que es parte, como implementar TLC, Plan Puebla Panama, y la minería. Ajá. Como estrategia de esto, incluso van a ser como un megaproyecto en el Petén, abriendo paso desde México, Petén y todo Centroamérica. So she said, this is part of the strategy because, for example, in Petén, um, there's this mega highway that they are opening up to be able to move products uh, from Mexico all the way through South, through Petén to South America, Central America. Which is the northern transversal strip I mentioned. Entonces, bueno, regresando en, en lo de la mina, si ustedes ven aquí, eh, hay fotos donde las casas están rajadas por la explotación eh, de, de la mina, que cuando hacen, quiebran las piedras, eh, utilizan maquinarias grandes en la cual las casas están, están se rajaron más de 100 casas. Entonces, la mina. Eh, no quiere asumir que esto fue por ellos, sino que es porque las casas no están bien construidas. So returning back to the theme of, of the mine, um, there's the, you'll see in some of these photographs that there are pictures of cracked houses. Um, and so in the process of mining, there's um, rocks that are broken by explosions and heavy machinery, and you have more than 100 cases of houses that are severely cracked, and so the mine doesn't want to take responsibility for this. They say that the houses were poorly constructed. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about what's happened in the communities with the water use, with the use of cyanide in the process of extracting and cleaning the gold? She said those are the cracks in the houses. Um, la pregunta es si se puede explicar un poquito um, la situación en cuanto al agua 
la contaminación del agua, el impacto en la salud, etc. Bueno, este, como ustedes ya vieron acá, este, ya, ahora ya se ve, ya se sienten los impactos, los daños que está causando esto en la vida de, la, de las mujeres. Este, entonces, ahora los niños eh, ya tienen enfermedades en la piel como ronchas y eso es por la contaminación del agua. Y las mujeres eh, se le están cayendo el pelo, entonces ahora se está haciendo un estudio más para ver qué más enfermedades hay y, y hay mucha también eh, de mucha eh, están la gente están afectada por la el, la, la, el respiratorio eh, en donde o sea, no, no se entiende que antes no era así entonces eh, ellos están ahí sí que contaminando con todo los animales también se están muriendo o sea por tomar el agua porque ellos se adueñaron de los pozos y de los nacimientos de agua en estas comunidades. So as you can see here, uh, the impacts are already being felt in the lives of the women. Now, in terms of the children, the children are experiencing uh, open sores because of the contamination of the water. Women are losing their hair. There are studies currently being done to see what other kinds of sicknesses or impacts there are on health. People have respiratory impacts. It's not fully understood, but they know it wasn't like this before. Animals have started dying because the, the water is contaminated. The mine took over uh, many water sources, um, many wells and water sources, uh, which are now contaminated. Entonces, eh, pues ahí están las mujeres siempre diciendo en la lucha y en la resistencia y pues ya Bridget ya les pasó, el, la misma compañera dice que esperamos tener el apoyo de, a nivel internacional de, de seguir en la lucha, no es fácil, es difícil luchar contra un monstruo entonces eh, vamos a seguir y pues eh, lo que queremos eh, es que las mujeres eh, les quiten la orden de captura para ser libres porque no merecen y pues también este, lo que pedimos es que se vaya la, la empresa de, de Guatemala, pero es bien difícil, ellos están poniendo mucha gente en contra, en donde dice que nos tienen que apoyar para seguir aquí, entonces ellos están luchando muy fuertemente también para que no se vayan de, del país. Lucha. So, the, so the, these women in, in the photo, they, they're always in struggle, they're always resisting, and uh, Bridget already passed out an international letter to you, and as the, um, compañera, as the woman said in, the, in her message, she's asking for international support, because it's not easy to fight a monster, and we will continue, and what we are asking for, some of the things we are asking for is that they uh, eliminate the arrest warrants, against these women because they are they are not free and so that they can live free and also that the company leaves uh, Guatemala because it's uh, but it's very difficult it's because they are they are pitting many people uh, against each other uh, many people are are, are fighting uh, for uh, there are people in the communities fighting uh, for the mine hace como eh, dos meses llegó el de la tropa de, del futuro sino que ellos quieren vivir en el momento y el presente So in many places, uh, many people have asked me why is it the women that are struggling against this and, and not the men, and, and I was also asked this question uh, here tonight, and I said the simple fact that um, the men you know, got excited by the prospect of, of money, uh, they don't have the same connection to Mother Earth and to all that surrounds us they, um, as the women do, they were not concerned about the future, they were living in the present. Y además, ellos tienen mucho miedo de hablar que las mujeres. And, and they are also much more afraid to speak than the women. Prefieren callarse y no decir nada, no está pasando nada, por si no, algo les puede pasar. They'd rather stay quiet, say nothing's happening, everything's fine, because otherwise something will happen to them. Por eso casi no hay apoyo de los, de los hombres, más solo de las mujeres. So this is why there isn't the same level of support from the men more than women. Siempre. Siempre. <laughs> um, I think that, wait, you were waiting for the question, weren't you? <laughs>
I was just going to give a, a few little clarifications. One, when they talk about 2% and $4 billion, that's only $80 million, but they cover that by just the interest over the course of the year. So in technicality, they're not paying anything. Second, um, I was in Panama for, for six months, and way in the late 90s, they were automatically expanding the roads for heavy traffic. That would be old Panamanian highway. The, the third part is the Chinese government has bought both Rodman and um, Fort Sherman and built the new Panamanian railroad back up because in Panama, in, um, there's two places that they're free trade zones. So by bringing the stuff in from China, they can go in and bring it to the free trade zone and get it up to the United States without paying any imports. And the fourth part, it's the old mercantile system. You come into a country for their resources, but you don't provide any manufacturing base. So otherwise, you take the resources, whether it's gold, oil, whatever, to process them, you have to take it out of the country. That's the trick of the, the game. Give the men jobs, can pay them a little bit money, and take their resources out of the country. Uh, do you think that the, the history of the years of conflict and the repression has anything to do with the, 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 will, the unwillingness of the men to stand up and, and resist? ¿Usted piensa que los años de, de la guerra, años de la represión, han influido en que los hombres no quieren entrar en la lucha o, o alzar la voz? Eh, puede ser que sea una parte influye eso, porque muchos eh, hombres indígenas fueron patrulleros, mataron a mucha gente, eh, mucha gente fue parte del ejército y pues también lo, me imagino yo, esa es una opinión personal, que ellos ya no quieren meterse en, en, un, en un rollo como nosotras le decimos y ellos son más débiles en ese sentido, o sea, no quieren o sea, dar la cara por defender. O sea, ellos al final, aunque ellos dicen que son los hombres fuertes, eh, son machistas, pero ya en la realidad... And, and so th that could be an influencing factor because many indigenous men were forced into the civil patrols, um, were part of uh, the military. This is my personal opinion. Uh, and they don't now don't want to get involved in what we call, you know, get involved in that mess. Um, so in this sense, they're weaker. They don't want to face uh, or defend. Um, and so although they're, they're machismo, is, is strong and say they are stronger, this is not true.